define function f from the set of integers to set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, such that f of x is the remainder when x is divided by 5. Put another way, f of x is giving us the value of x mod 5. Anyway, let's go on. Let capital S sub n be the double summation a equals to 1 to n, b equals to 1 to n, of f of a to the b minus 1 power plus a to the b power plus a to the b plus 1 plus a to the b plus 2 for n belonging to the set of positive integers. Now the main thing we want to focus on is that b minus 1, b, b plus 1, and b plus 2 are consecutive integers. And when we are taking powers of x to consecutive integers, usually there is a pattern that's going to unfold. So maybe this is going to help us out. Okay, so what do we want to find? If n is equal to 5k plus 3 for some non-negative integer k, prove that s sub n can be written as alpha plus beta k plus gamma k squared for real alpha, beta, gamma, and find alpha, beta, and gamma. Before we go on, I want to recognize Gabriel N, who was the very first person to correctly answer this challenge with the answer 12, 33, and 20. A huge shout out to Gabriel N, and let's see if we can simplify this expression as well. And as I mentioned, I'm going to approach this question by taking advantage of these consecutive powers. What we are going to do is that we are going to let B be fixed. So we are going to let B be some number, such as 1, 2, or 20, 17. And while B is fixed, we are going to try to let A vary from 1 to N and see what happens to this entire expression. And you may say, are we allowed to let B be fixed when A is outside and B is inside? Well, the answer is yes, because we have a finite double summation, and when both the summations are finite, we are allowed to switch their order, so we can let b be fixed, a be fixed, the summation is going to be the same. So let's think about what happens when we apply our function f to a raised to 4 consecutive integer powers. So for example, let's let a be congruent to 1 mod 5. In this case, a to the first power is going to be 1, a to the second power is going to be 1, a to the third power is going to be 1, fourth power, it's always going to be 1. How about when a is congruent to 2? So that's when a is congruent to 1. So how about when a is congruent to 2? In this case, 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, take mod 5, going to get us 3. And multiply by another 2 gets us 6, 6 mod 5 is 1. And of course, when you multiply by another 2, we're going to get 2 again. And we're going to have this 2, 4, 3, 1 repeating over and over and over again. How about when a is congruent to 3 mod 5? Well, that's 3. Then 9, which is 4 mod 5. 4 times 3 is 12, 2 mod 5. 2 times 3 is 6 or 1 mod 5. And once again, when we multiply by another 3, we're going to go back to 3. So 3, 4, 2, 1 is going to repeat. And when n is congruent to 4 mod 5, we're going to get 4. 16, we're back to 1. And 1 times 4 is 4, then 1, then 4, then 1, so on. So in this case, 4, 1 is repeating. And finally, when a is congruent to 0 mod 5, we are always going to have 0 except when we are raising a to 0 power. What do I mean by that? Well, think of any number 0 mod 5. So for example, a equals to 10 is congruent to 0 mod 5. 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, 10 cubed, 10 to the fourth, 10 to any positive integer powers are going to be 0 mod 5 because these are going to be multiples of 5. But a problem happens when we raise it to 0th power because 10 to the 0th power is 1, not 0 mod 5. And as we can see, we are starting at b equals to 1. So when b is 1, and only when b is 1, we are going to have a to the 0th power. And when we are raising a to the 0th power, we are always going to get 1. It's always going to be 1. 
And the only problem that I see is that we still have the pattern. We have pattern of bunch of ones. We have patterns of one two four three one two four three. We have pattern of one three four two one four one four one four. All of these are fine, except the pattern is breaking apart when a is congruent to zero mod five. So we have to pay special attention when b is one. So let's do it by casework. We are going to first start with the case when b is not equal to 1, b is a fixed integer not equal to 1, and we are going to let a vary. And in the second case, we are going to let b equal to 1. So in this case, what is happening? Well, when we add up 4 consecutive powers of a, no matter where we start, we are always going to be adding up 1, 1, 1, 1. So in this case, we are adding plus 4. How about the second case? Well, no matter how we started, we are going to be adding up 1, 2, 3, and 4. And 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. So we are going to be adding our function evaluated at 10, or we are going to be adding 0 because 10 is a multiple of 5. And how about the next case? Well, here we are going to be adding up 1, 2, 3, 4, no matter how we started. So 4 consecutive powers of 3 is going to contribute 0 to the sum as well. In the same case for this one, 4 consecutive powers is going to contribute 1, 4, 1, 4, which is 10 congruent to 0. And last case is pretty obvious when b is not equal to 1, we are going to be adding up 0. So what is this telling us? Well, when b is a fixed integer not equal to 1, as a cycles in a group of 5, from a congruent 1 to a congruent 0, as we are cycling, we are adding 4. So the value of the entire summation is increasing by 4 every time a cycles in a group of 5 for a fixed value of b. And we see that our a is going to go from 1 to n, where n is equal to 5k plus 3, so we are going to be cycling through groups of 5 k times. So that's telling us that we are going to be adding up 4 k times, so we are adding 4k to the entire summation, and in the final incomplete cycle, in the final cycle, where we are going through 3 values, so when we are going through a congruent 1, congruent 2, and congruent 3, we are going to be adding up another plus 4 to the entire summation. So we are going to do 4k plus 4. And we are adding up 4k plus 4 for every single value of b not equal to 1. And it does not matter what the value of b is. So we are going from b equals to 1 to n. And because we are not counting b equals to 1, we are going to multiply this by n minus 1. And we want the final answer in terms of k. So let's let our n be 5k plus 3. So our n minus 1 is 5k plus 2. So, so far, we have a 4k plus 4 times 5k plus 2, which is 20k squared plus 20k plus 8k, or 28k plus 8. So that's our polynomial so far. And we have one more case to consider, and that's when b is equal to 1. Well, when b is equal to 1, we are only going to be considering powers of 0, 1, 2, then 3. And in this case, when we are raising something to power of 0, we are always going to get 1 mod 5, even if the number was 0 mod 5. So in this case, we are going to be adding up 1, 1, 1, 1, so plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so plus 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 here as well, so plus 0. So all of these summations are staying the same, except the last one. Instead of adding plus 0, we are going to be adding plus 1, which means when b is equal to 1, as a cycles in a group of 5, we are adding plus 5, 1 plus 4, instead of plus 4. So in this case, when b is equal to 1, so from this, we have to add another extra 5 every time a cycles by 5, and that's k times. And for the last incomplete cycle, when we are going 3 more steps, we are going to be adding up another 4, 4 plus 0 plus 0. So we are going to put another plus 4. So if you do this thing, plus 5k plus 4, we are going to get our final answer of 20k squared plus 33k plus 12. 
So looking at the question again, so let's go back up. We want to find alpha, beta, and gamma such that alpha plus beta k plus gamma k squared is the polynomial we found. That's pretty easy to do. Our alpha is 12, our beta is 33, and finally our gamma is 20. So let's go all the way up and write down our answer. We know our alpha is 12, our beta is 33, and finally our gamma is 20.